Hey guys, how's it going? James here from Cardio, etc. I am back. <laughs> It's been a few weeks since I've uploaded now and a couple of people have pointed out and I'm really really sorry but here's why. It's been pretty busy recently so if, as you know from my last video Jess and I we went to Rarotonga had an amazing time I did vlog while I was over there so if you um, haven't checked out the vlogs from while I was over there I'll put a link up on I think it's I can never get which side of the screen it's on. I'm pretty sure it's up here. I'll put a link to the channel or the playlist where I put the vlogs. They're not all up here. I'm still in the process of editing them. And this is kind of the reason why I haven't made a car audio video in a while because you guys know me, I'm a really, really slow editor. I'm pretty inefficient. Like, I'm, I enjoy filming, but I'm a super slow editor. Um, yeah, we had an awesome time. So I'm still editing those vlogs and uploading them as I speak. But... The other reason I haven't had time to, you know, get back in touch with you guys is because it's been pretty hectic for Jess and I because uh, we've got some fairly, fairly big news. Um, if you watch my vlogs, you guys will know this now. This is kind of why I wanted to wait before I made this video, but because um, the last one I uploaded, it contained this information. But uh, we're engaged. Yeah, I am. Um, I proposed to Jess, she said yes, thankfully. <laughs> I had planned this for a long, long time. I actually planned that trip to Rarotonga and board the ring at the same time way back in March and we've only just recently done the trip like in May now. So I've had it I've had this plan for quite a while. It was so much fun. It was exactly what I wanted it to be. And yeah, we're both super happy because now we're engaged. And um, yeah, so that like kind of the other reason it's been super hectic for me. I haven't had a chance to you know do anything for you guys, cause like pretty much every chance I've had where I would do filming or something, I've either been trying to edit those vlogs to get them up, or we've been you know seeing family members, relatives, friends, you know, getting congratulations all over the show from you know different parts of the country and all of that. And uh, also, yeah, as I said, I wanted to wait until I uploaded the vlog which contained that. So if you guys want to see the video where I did propose, I'll put another wee card up here, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's at the end of that video. You can watch the whole thing through if you want, or if you don't want to watch the whole thing through, I will chuck a timestamp on the uh, video right about now. So yeah, that's pretty much the, the big news for Jess and I. Um, questions you may be having? When are we getting married? We don't have a set time or date, kind of. Like, we're not like, we haven't like, you know, planned it all out. We're not in those stages. We're kind of at this stage just playing it by year. And we'll do it when we feel like it, when we, you know, feel ready. It's not that we're not ready. It's just that we have also got a whole lot going on with us at the moment. Mainly Jess is getting her new personal training business off the ground at the moment. So, um for both just busyness reasons and financial reasons a wedding is not ideal right now but we're super happy to have made this next step um yeah but it will be i think it, it's not going to be this year it's not going to be 2017 i think we've figured out it's either going to be 2018 or 2019 i think we want it to be in the next sort of two years don't we mm. as i say like we don't have anything set in stone or real ideas we're just sort of guessing at this point um and as far as a date goes, again it's not set in stone, but I think we would quite like to do it on the 10th of November. Reason for that is because Jess and I actually, <laughs> you're going, <laughs> orange light, Jess and I actually got together on the 10th of November 2012. And that's kind of a special date for us because coincidentally, we, re we both really like it because that actual date is 10, 11, oh no, 12. What have, I done? what have you done? I'm in the wrong lane now. You're in the left hand turning up. So we're thinking maybe the 10th of November, either 2018 or 19, but again, we're playing it by year. That's not a definite. We're just sort of brainstorming ideas at the moment. So yeah, that's pretty much the main news with us. Now on to uh, updates with what's happening with me and you know car audio stuff so updates with like the legacy and judy and stuff like that so 
Judy is not finished. Definitely not finished. I know I kind of set you guys up for a bunch more work to be done on it and kind of not didn't follow through on it, but I haven't really, you know, shown you much. The reason for that is, as I have said, I um, when I did my subwoofer video, I wanted to, for the tweeters, make a full video containing the start to finish install of those custom tweeter pods and things like that. So the problem is... I have kind of stalled on that. Um, it's partly because of time and money and partly because of procrastination. I just need to get off my ass and finish it. But where they're at at the moment is the tweeter pods are like made. They're not finished. Like one of the, like they're kind of halfway through that kind of sanding, body, body filler and sanding process. Um, if I've got a photo I'll stick it up here I'm pretty sure I took a couple for the patreon page a while ago so that's kind of where the legacy is up to it's by all means not finished there is definitely more content with the legacy to come out I've got to finish those Twitter pods run new wires for the extra set of speakers that's gonna be installed install the three-way component speakers so I've got to pretty much finish those Twitter pods and install the new set of speakers and then after that it is on to sound deadening what and I'm going to sound deaden all the doors, both skins. I want to sound deaden the wheel arches in the back and also the driver's footwells and floors. I want to get as much noise out of the car as I possibly can. Um, that's another part which is kind of stalled for money for me a wee bit. Because between that trip and the engagement ring and a bunch of other stuff, I am a wee bit short on cash at the moment. But we'll get there in the end. Um, in the meantime, there is another project that I kind of want to announce. Uh, you may not have noticed, but we're actually in a different car than what you're used to seeing us in. So this is Jess's new car. It's a 1995 Toyota RAV4. Wee bit of history with the car, it's actually my mum's old car. And the reason we bought it off her is because even though it's like a 95, a, it's got quite low K's on it, it's only got like, it's got less than 150,000 K's on it for its age, that's quite, that's not very many. And also, it ever since, because I grew up with this car, and we've had it for a long time, and it's never hit a fault. It's like a diamond in the rough, they're an amazing car. Not, I'm not saying it's like a performance car or anything like that, it's, you know, it's not like, but it's really, really good quality, it's been well maintained, it hasn't ever missed a beat, and really needs anything done to it so it's a perfect car for Jess because it's low cost and it's I, you quite like um, the way you sit in it mm. don't you you like like the upright position as opposed to like a yeah. sitting down low in a car sort of position so this car I'm going to be kitting it out with a uh, bit of a sound system nothing new I'm um, what I'm kind of doing is donating a lot of my uh, older sound system gear to Jess I am going to be installing her stereo that we had in her last car which I think is what I'm going to try and get done at the end of this video. I'm going to be installing her singleton Sony deck up here, replacing this doubleton one with a couple of pockets. It's going to get new speakers, amplifier. It's probably going to probably going to get a subwoofer of some kind. Okay, so yes, as I was saying, I am doing almost a complete sound system in this car. Pretty much a complete sound system. It's getting the new the new Sony stereo that she's had in her last car, which by the way is this one here. The MEX N 5050 BT by Sony. She really likes it. I said to her, Would you rather just keep the Alpine one, which is in here already? By the way, I installed this a while ago for mum back in the day. It probably is worth doing the upgrade to be honest, because this is getting a wee bit old and the Bluetooth is getting a wee bit funny in it now. And uh, as Bluetooth goes on with our phones, as it updates slowly and slowly uh you know more and more the bluetooth becomes less and less compatible do you know what i mean like because our phones update but the stereo doesn't yes you can do updates from the computer but i think they've stopped making updates for this uh now so it probably is worth putting this singleton in so we're going to put this singleton stereo up here in this top location and then down the bottom here we're going to have this pocket and another pocket down the bottom what else am I doing to it? I'm doing front speakers, rear speakers, four channel amplifier, uh, probably a subwoofer with, uh, uh, like definitely a subwoofer, like a 12 inch sub with its own amplifier, probably. I still have to figure it out. So what I, because what I'm doing is I'm giving her all my stuff that I had in the Legnum. So I've got uh, a Sony powerful four channel amp 
that I had, which will be driving all the speakers probably. I've got the Rockford Fosgate P16S punch series components and the Rockford Fosgate T1675, which are the power series coaxials. I haven't decided yet whether to put the coaxials in the front and the components down the back, and you'll see why in a second. The back speakers are in a really stupid location, they're like in the back, in the boot here, not on the back doors. So I'm considering doing the coaxials up the front and then, um, then just doing the punch woofers back here since they don't, since they're down low and out of the way and then maybe putting the tweeters like up here or something. I don't know because there's no need for treble to be in the boot and I'm trying to decide whether to even install those tweeters because what I was thinking I could do is have the front speakers powered off the amp, right? And then the punch series component woofers, which are basically just little subwoofers, have those in the boot here and connected to the head unit with the rear bass enhancer turned on. What that does is it low passes the rear output channel and boosts the bass on it. So you've basically got two little six inch mini subwoofers in the boot as well as a 12 inch sub in a box. And then I could use the other two channels of the four channel amp to power it. I don't know. I'm still kind of designing as I go, but I want to get the stereo in because it's she's had the car for a wee bit now and I haven't done it yet. So I'm using the first sort of dry weekend that I'm back here now to do it. Let's crack in. These Rev 4s are literally some of the easiest cars to work on. Everything is like held in with no more than almost like two screws or four screws or something. Literally for this cover, just two screws there and then pop that out. Take your lightning cable out of there. This bottom panel literally just pops off like that. And then we've got four screws for each location. Something else I'm going to do when I get a chance is take this dash off, this dash whole dash piece, which is a, not hard, but a wee bit of a uh, time consuming job because you have to take the shroud off the steering wheel and stuff as well. I need to replace the bulb, which is behind this, which lights up when you turn the lights on because at night at the moment, she hasn't got any lights behind her heater controls. I also need to fix, by the look of it, both of these heater vents. Because while this one is still in place, all the vertical slats have fallen down into the vent and this one has completely fallen out of alignment. So at some point I need to take all of that off and try and fix some of it. Maybe I'll do that today if I get a chance. I'm not doing much else, but I do have a few more videos I want to make. <coughs> Since I've been so slacking on making videos for you guys. Oh, by the way, the car's name, we think we like. Uh, we've decided to call it Zumbo. Yeah, don't know why. Zumbo just seems to fit the character of the car. Okay, there's the pocket, there's the stereo, and do that, there's the harness, unplug the microphone, pretty sure there's no CDs in here, I might just quickly check there's no CDs, nope no CDs, sweet, fortunately when I did the install I used a hookup lead which means I can just solder this hookup lead to the new Sony one. Okay, there's the uh, double pocket thing done. <clears throat> might as well put that back in so I can stick this and this and this all up out of this hole. Shake that back in there. Like that. It's back on. Done. Two pockets. Next mission. Stereo. I don't have any grub screws by the look of it. Which means I'm gonna have to find some. I'm gonna have to go inside and try and find some grub screws. <clears throat> so because, as usual, I have forgotten something. This always happens every time I try to do a job at home. There's always something that I forget 
that I need and don't bring with me. So what I'm going to have to do is the kind of makeshift way for now. If you don't have the right screws for your head unit, don't ever put just extra long ones in. Because these holes go straight through into the circuit board and the mechanics of stereos. And if you put a long screw in there and the CD mech tries to do something and hits it, you're screwed. So I'm going to have to do it the real dodgy ass way of wrapping the brackets on with electrical tape. This will be temporary. I will not leave it like this. I will go to work on either Monday or today or tomorrow at some point and bring home the correct grub screws that I need for mounting the brackets on here. So just for this one time or this one moment, I am using some electrical tape just to hold the brackets on there. There we go. Just temporary. It's actually quite strong, but it's just temporary. I will get the correct screws and screw it in through those points. That will work for now. That will hold that in there. Okay. What I need to do now, I think, is probably solder the harness or I can get this microphone wire out first. Sweet, there's the Alpine microphone out. Pop that back up. And this thing. Go back in. I'm not putting the microphone down the same side again. I'm actually going to run it down the passenger side because that's what I do standard nowadays when I do stereo installations. The reason I go down the passenger side is because it's most of the time much easier just to run the microphone behind the glove box than up around any of the uh, driver's side stuff because often it has like moving steering columns and stuff like that so it's easier just to go behind the heater I mean behind the glove box where it doesn't move but this now I can go back with can go back with that stereo might as well do the microphone first This electrical tape just holds it, holds the uh, cable out of the way while I'm putting the trim back on and then ultimately after a while even if the electrical tape falls off it's the trim that prevents the uh, prevents the microphone wire from moving anywhere. Okay, here's my microphone. Cool, microphone done. Now the harness. So I just have to take these off, put that one on. All right, this tape's been on here a while. Okay, so with any luck, because all of these have been soldered before, I won't have to put any new solder on, I can just detach that and attach this. <sighs> Let's see if this works. There we go, loomed, that one there already had a crimp on it so I can use that to power the amp up when I do need to. Now we can go put this in the car.
AM to make sure it's got full reception. Yep. And that even stopped on 612 as well, which is a really weak station, so that's good. There's one more thing I want to trick, I want to check or try before I finish. Okay, this here is a little uh, Sony control arm, which I actually had in my Legnum for a wee bit when I after I found it and attached it to my Pioneer stereo and it worked. But what I want to do is uh, Try and put it with the Sony and see if it works. Oh my god! We've got volume. Seeking. Attenuate. Off. Oh my god, it, it works, guys. Like, it's really straight off the bat. It doesn't quite do everything right, like um, the volume button is actually the seeking and vice versa, like seeking is volume. This mode button here is mute. The off button works and then the source button works as well. That does, wait, what does that do? That's display, okay. And that goes through the bands. Oh my God, they're all working, crazy. That works, now I just have to find a place for it. As cool as it would be to have this thing somewhere on the column or something, I actually think maybe we don't need it. I'll ask Jess and see what she thinks, but literally your hand from here to the stereo is like that, which is no different to going like this to a column, to the shaft thing. I mean, the only place I could think that might be cool is if we had it down here, sticking up out of this panel, which would mean it's like a, uh, I don't know. Let me ask Jess. So the question, close your door just so it doesn't ding. So the question is, do you want this mounted somewhere? Because, at the moment, that works for volume, that works for seeking. <laughs> <laughs> can hide it inside Mr. Pickle. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really kinky Jess. Oh yeah, we don't really want to do that to Mr. Pickle. Yeah, because it's so close, eh? I mean, because I, I was thinking I'll install this because it'll work, and it does work, but um, the stereo is so close to the steering wheel yeah, that controlling it from, with your hand is going to be pretty and easy. So, I mean, it's up to you. But. I do like the pink colour. How do I make the colour? So you go menu. Cool. You're all set Yay. with your stereo. Hooray! Happy? Yep. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to dance with Latin music. Aladdin music? No, Latin music. Oh, Latin. I was like, Aladdin music, that's a bit. Oh, I, I need to fix these. Hmm? I need to fix these. Okay, there we go. Rave 4 is complete. Here's what it looks like from the outside, by the way. I don't know if I showed you guys that before. It's just your classic, common Rave 4 blue. Four door, well, five door. So, for the rest of the system, I haven't yet figured out what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you guys my theoretical options you're welcome to suggest me some if you've got some we'll say what you think you like better but i still haven't figured out what i'm going to do so it's definitely getting this that will be in there somewhere in a you know in just a cheap prefabricated box here's the rest of the gear i've got to work with okay i've got a fusion mono block amp i can either use that to power the amp, power the sub or not and here's the rest of the gear Okay, so we got my Rockford Fosgate T-Series coaxial speakers and P-Series components and my Sony 4-channel amp under there. Okay, so here's my options. Option 1. Just your standard, as you'd expect, component speakers in the front. Obviously woofers in here. Tweeter custom mounted either like somewhere on the panel or on this pod whether I flush mount them or just pod mount them somewhere not sure that in the front the coaxial speakers mounted back here in the boot all, f all eight of them sorry all four of the speakers being driven by the four channel amp mounted somewhere probably I'm probably gonna put the amp under the seat regardless 
so all full range front and rear and then the subwoofer powered off the monoblock amp that's option one option two is similar but kind of just back to front where i put the coaxial speakers the power series ones in the front doors that way there's no ugly tweeters or anything anywhere and the components at the back the punch series woofer down here in the boot where it's not going to be able to really even be heard and the tweeter may be somewhere up high or something I don't facing forwards and all of it on full range and then the subwoofer still powered off the monoblock amp that's option two option three does away with the tweeter and the monoblock amp and then what we have is the front power series coaxials powered off two channels of the four channel amp the subwoofer powered off the other two channels of the four channel amp in bridged mode and then just these woofers in the boot here powered off the head unit with rear bass enhancer turned on which is what I've actually got it turned on at the moment um, as I explained earlier in the video rear bass enhancer basically just low passes the rear channels to like a subwoofer sort of low pass filter maybe 150 hertz or so and boosts the bass a wee bit so basically what that would be like is having two channel at the front two six inch mini subwoofers at the back of the boot here which are boosted up a wee bit as well as a 12 inch sub in a box which wouldn't be as grunty having it on this as it would on the monoblock but it would mean I'd only have to install one amplifier and if you look, in, I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see it or not, but if you look in here now, factory speakers which are in here aren't even dual cone. They're actually just one woofer with a dust cap on it. No dual cone, no additional speakers. These back speakers essentially are already factory mini subwoofers, except they're not connected to their own sub output or anything like that, you know? So they're basically little bass woofers and then up the front, they're full range. I don't know guys, I'm tossing up the ideas, you guys let me know what you think in the comments. I kind of really like the idea of just the one amp doing the front speakers and the subwoofer. That way there's nothing ugly up the front where I've custom mounted a tweeter and nothing, no tweeters up high or anything like that, just these woofers hidden in behind here. It'll just depend, I'll, I think I definitely like the idea of the coaxials up the front and the components down the back, whether I decide to put the tweeter in or not and go full range or not I'm not sure if I did put the tweeter in I would have to go full range which would either mean having the rear bass enhancer turned off or putting in an additional amplifier to power the subwoofer I don't know let me go know what you guys think in the comments that's what I plan to do for this car if there's one thing I know about Jess and the way she likes her music above anything she wants it loud just loud, loud, loud. She loves to be able to rock along as she's driving, sing her heart out, really enjoy herself. And these speakers definitely know how to go loud. These were awesome in the Lignum. So that's my plan, kind of. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I know it was a bit longer than usual. Sorry for the wait and the time it's taken for me to get from, you know, before I went away to this point. I promise there is more content coming again. I've just been, you know, focusing on getting those vlogs uploaded and there's been a lot going on for me and Jess lately. But thank you for sticking with me. And a special thank you goes out to everyone on my Patreon support team. So that's Christopher Fox, Clint Lee, Matt Stark, Andrew Harley and Brian Malcolm. Thank you guys so much for all your support and thank you everyone else for the awesome comments and the liking of the videos and everything like that. Choose to be happy and I'll catch you in my next video, hopefully sometime soon. Kakadano.